Okay, in this video we're going to look at something called the delta function or more appropriately the delta distribution. So how we're going to do this is the following. So for epsilon bigger than zero, we're going to define this delta epsilon x to be equal to one over epsilon if x is between zero and epsilon and to be zero otherwise. And then we're going to set delta x equal to the limit of these as epsilon approaches zero. So let's just sketch what one of these looks like right here. So we want to think that epsilon is a pretty small number, but I'll um, expand it a little bit so we have an idea for what's going on here. And now this delta is going to be given by like a function like this, so like a rectangle. Obviously that vertical line is not there, but that gives you an idea for what's going on. And then as we push epsilon closer and closer to zero, notice we're going to get like bigger and bigger spikes here because one over epsilon is going to be um, bigger. Okay, great. So now the first thing that we want to do is look at the following proposition. So if we take the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of x times delta shifted to x naught, we just get the value of f at x naught. So we'll do a little computational proof of this. This is not super careful, but it's like kind of good enough. Great. So uh, what we'll do is the following. Notice that we can take this entire integral from negative infinity to infinity of f of x delta of x minus x naught dx and write it as follows. This can be written as um, the limit as epsilon goes to zero of this same thing. So minus infinity to infinity of f of x delta epsilon x minus x zero dx. Great. And now this thing shifted over is just going to change this to x naught to x naught plus epsilon. And now we can write this as the limit as epsilon goes to zero of one over epsilon. So that's going to be the value of delta epsilon on the interval, interval from x naught to x naught plus epsilon. So that means we're going to take our integral from x naught to x naught plus epsilon of f of x dx. Okay, great. Okay, so the next thing we can do is notice that this is an indeterminate form as a limit. As epsilon goes to zero, we have this limit, which is like the integral from x naught to x naught of f of x. Well, that's obviously zero. And then we have epsilon is also going to zero. So we can see that more clearly if we write this as follows. So this is the limit as epsilon goes to zero of the integral from x naught to x naught plus epsilon of f of x dx all over epsilon. And now notice that this bit is approaching zero and this bit is also approaching zero. I'm going to finish this integral off with the following substitution. So we're going to get, let u equal x minus x naught. So that's going to give us x equals u plus x naught. And then also we have dx equals du. Great. So that's all we need to fill in the inside of the integral. Now let's look at the bounds of integration. So when x is equal to x naught, u is going to be zero. And then when x is equal to x naught plus epsilon, u is going to be epsilon. So that's going to reduce this to the limit as epsilon goes to zero. We have an epsilon in the denominator. And then we have the integral from uh, zero to epsilon of f of u plus x naught du. And now I want to point out here that these are u numbers in the u integral which we got from our change of variables. Now the next thing we want to do is use L'Hopital's rule to take the derivative of the numerator and the denominator by epsilon given the fact that we have this indeterminate form and along the way we're going to use the second fundamental theorem of calculus to reduce the numerator. So no, notice the derivative of the denominator is going to be 1 and the derivative of the numerator is going to be f evaluated at u, sorry, at epsilon plus x naught. So we're going to be given with the limit as epsilon goes to zero of f of u plus epsilon, sorry, x naught plus epsilon. Great. And now as we take epsilon to zero, this gives us f of x naught, which is what we wanted. Okay, good. So I'm going to clean up the board and then we're going to look at the Laplace transform of this delta function.
Okay, so now that I've cleaned up the board, we're gonna use this proposition to find the Laplace transform of this delta function. So first of all, let's set um, A to be bigger than zero. Good, and now let's look at the Laplace transform of delta of x minus A. Okay, so this is going to give us the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus st times delta x minus a, sorry, t minus a dt. Sorry, here we're using t as our uh, variable. Okay, so now, but we can just apply this proposition that we proved to notice that this delta function inside this integral is just going to pick out the value of um, e to the minus st, where t is equal to a, so in other words, we're going to get e to the minus a s. So that's the Laplace transform of this delta function, and that's the end of the video.